Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome to Little's Law YouTube channel. This is me, Yavasan Shanmugam, and today we are going to see about another interesting plugin, which is the custom JMeter function. So what does this custom JMeter function does? So this custom JMeter function gives us a lot of functions. That so this custom JMeter function plugin extends jmeters functionality with a number of useful functions and we have lot of functions which we can see it in this video and before we move on to the video this is me avasan shanmugam i request you all to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet like comment and ask your questions in the comment section and send your feedbacks so we have choose random function we have double sum we have env e n v which receives an environment variable value we have is defined we have md5 which is computing the md5 hash of string or variable value we have is defined which determines if the variable was already defined we have base 64 encode which encodes a string or variable value with base 64 algorithm we have base 64 decode which decodes a string or variable value from base 64 into string we have string length which calculates the length of a constant string or variable value we have substring which returns a substring of a particular string we have string replace which replaces a part of the string with another string we have string replace regular expression which replaces all the substrings that satisfy the regular expression with the replacement string we have uppercase and lowercase which changes the case of string or variable value we have iteration number which returns the number of current iteration in the thread group we have if which provides if syntax and we have case format which provides changing string case format so we all know how to download the customer jmeter custom jmeter function so for that we have to go to browse plugins and search for custom jmeter functions and click on download and we get the latest 2.1 function and let's just see all the custom jmeter functions one by one and there is another way of doing it that is going to options plugins manager and so i have already installed the custom jmeter functions so let's now see the custom jmeter function one by one so let me add a variable here which is going to be custom and we'll be adding the custom jmeter function here so there is one more thing which is without adding the custom jmeter functions plugin these custom jmeter functions will not work so we have to make sure that we make this plugin installed and only then we have to try all these custom jmeter functions so the first jmeter function is choose random so this function chooses a single random value from the list of its arguments the last argument is not taken into choice it is interpreted as a variable name to store the result so the first value is to choose from the second value is to choose from so same way so till the last value so the last value is the value that where we are going to save the value where we are going to store the result so let's now run this script and see how does it work let me just clear this thing and i'm running the script now and here we can see that the custom is violet so out of all these values out of red green blue orange violet magenta we get the random color as violet we can even try this once again and check how does it work i'm running it again and i could see the color orange has come so this chooses random value so we can use this choosing a random value whenever we have or we need to choose a list of values from the identified value so we can use this one as a, an option to pass the variables and then next comes the double sum so the syntax of double sum is 
the same again it's going to be the same like what we have for choose random but then it is double sum and this double sum function is used to compute the sum of two or more floating point values so the first value and the second value will be added in case if we want to add more number of values which we want to add and display it we can add it so we can try this with the first two numbers so one two so the two numbers are required in case if they are not there then it will throw an error so make sure we have two numbers in this as a part of the syntax so let us run this and see how does it work so i'm giving 3.5 and 4.7 to sum and let's run this and see how does it work and here we can see the number the total number is 8.2 and in case if we want to add more numbers we can try that in here so i'm adding 10 100 come on let me run it and see how does it work so here we can see the total number of the values which we have and then let's move on to the next one which is the env which is the environment so this environment so let's come up with this uh, let's first show me the syntax so this env are the environment so this function is used to get a value of environment variable and this returns a value of environment variable if variable was defined and the variable name otherwise if it defines the environment or it defines the variable and the first value here is a name of the environment variable and the second argument is the variable name to store the result and the third one the final one which we see here is the default value if the environment variable is not set so since here we have not set any environment variable if we execute it we'll get the default value and let's try it once here so here we can see the default value since we have not defined any of the environment variable here so let's now move on to the fourth custom function which is the define is defined so this is defined is similar to the previous function which starts with the dollar symbol and if the test variable is defined so the function is used to determine that if the variable was already defined it returns one if the variable was not defined it returns a zero and the first value is a string constant so which we give here is a string constant it can be a string constant or it can be a variable or a function call but it is required so let us try this one so okay. for the variable name so let me run this and let's see here so can see so since we have not defined any var var variable or value here so we are getting this as zero so let's now move on to the next one which is the md5 hash so this function the md5 so this md5 is used to calculate the md5 hash of constant string or variable value so the first value is string constant that we give here it can be a string constant or a variable or a function call and the second argument which is the variable name to store the result so you can can give here but still the first one is the required one the second one is an optional one so let's execute this and see how does it work the md5 hash value so here we can see so this is the md5 hash value which has come out of this md5 custom function and next we have base 64 encode so even this is similar to the previous one because this function is used to encode a constant string or a variable using base64 algorithm and the first value is a string constant or a variable or a function call and the second argument is again is used to store the result so let's run this base64 encode and let's see how does it work and here we can see so this is the base64 encode value and the, we have again the decode so decode is similar to encode so what we'll do is we will copy this value here whatever we have given whatever we have got as the encoded value and then let's pass this value in this function but we will decode it so we will decode what the value we have got as the encoder for the test string and let's see what we get as the output let me run this query and 
here we can see the test string so this is the value that we encoded and when we decode it we could get the value as text string test string so now the next custom function is str length so in case if we want to compute the length of a constant string or a variable value we can use this function and we can find the length of the constant string or a variable name so the first value is important so it is it should be re required and then the second value we have here is the value that we are used to store the result so let's now see here and before that let us see what is the length of little's law what is the length of this what is the length of our channel so let us search it and here we can find it so the value is 12 so the length of little's law is 12 so let's now move on to the next custom function which is the substring and the syntax of the substring is syntax of the substring is substring which is followed by the required value which we want to find uh, where we are going to find the substring of it and then the starting of the value and then the end of the value so here the test and the space and then it starts from str which is 5 6 which is 6 7 and 8 so until 5 we won't get any substring so it starts from 6 so that's the reason so we have 5 to 8 so which is 6 7 and 8 so we get the values after this which is after 5 which is 6 7 8 and that's how the substring works and let's see how does it work in this function and here we can see the value str is being substringed so let's now move on to the next custom function which is a string replace or which we call it as str replace and this function is a wrapper of java string dot replace method so the first value is a string constant and then we have the search substring so the banana apple orange or the first values which are which are the string constants or they are a variable in the function calls and the second variable or the second one is the substring which we want to search and the third one is the value which we are going to replace so let's run this and execute and see what does it happen so here we can see uh, the the word apple has been replaced by dog and we have got banana dog and orange so all this string replace function is working fine and so let's now move on to the next custom function which is the uppercase and lowercase and this function is used to transform the case of constant string or, or a variable value so the syntax is going to be the same which we see for every other custom function which starts with a dollar symbol and then the uppercase test which is the first value which is a string constant and which is a required value and the second one is where we are going to store the result and let's now run this and see how does it work so here we can see the value small test has been displayed as the big letter of test or the capital letters and let's now move on to the next custom function which is the iteration number and this function returns the number of current iterations in the thread group and let us execute it with the same syntax of what we have the same syntax format so which is if the dollars is going to be the size which is the actual value and then the expected value and the third one is if the condition is true and then the fourth one is if it is false so let's now execute this sample syntax and let's see how does it work so here we can see it is invalid because we are not executing the one which is given there so let me try it with this name with this thread group name and let's see how does it work let me try once again to check whether we have got the right one so again it is invalid so but the iteration number is the number of iterations that we executed here and let's move on to the next one which is the case format so this one where we used to change the case of the 
where we change the format cases from lower to uh, higher, I mean lower to upper string or upper to lower string. So let's see the syntax of it before we close this video. So this is the syntax of it. So we have the So this is the syntax of this case format where we change from the lower hyphen to the higher lower to a, an upper case. So, so far we saw about choosing random string function and then double sum and we have seen about the environment and is defined and also we saw about the MD5 hash value and then we saw about the base 64 encode and decode and then some of the string functions which is the length string replace and of the uppercase and lowercase strings and the iteration number and even with the if condition so with that we come to an end and i believe this video would have been very useful to you until we meet you in another interesting session it's bye bye from vasan shanmugam and little slaw